Hello folks, this is Mike Haley 7 coming to you on this lovely March afternoon. It's about 5 p.m. Temperatures in the 40s. On my way back from my workshop at the uh, Department Chairs Institute at North Carolina State University. Today I learned about uh, conflict resolution, uh, evaluations, diversity. It's a really interesting day. And I've, of course, I'm keenly interested in the ins and outs of being a department head, since that's what I'm moving into now. And this is something that will serve me, hopefully, for years to come. There was this really interesting piece at the end. The presenter asked us, in a traffic situation, what we do. Let's say you got two lanes, right? And they're both going the same way. But you see a sign that says, left lane closed ahead. So you got to merge to the right. See what I'm saying? Like, imagine these two lanes right here. These two lanes right here are going the same way but this one's gonna close. Do you get over immediately when you notice that the sign is there? Or do you get over a little bit later? Or do you get over at the last second? That was the question he asked. And everybody said the same thing. Well, not everybody. The majority of people in North Carolina get over as soon as possible. As Soon as they see that there's gonna be a merge, they get over. There are a couple of people who got over a little bit later, and then the minority said they get over at the last minute. Now I asked the presenter, I said, look, do you want me to do it as a North Carolinian, because I've been here 10 years, or do you want me to do it as a Bostonian? He said, do it as a Bostonian. So I get into the group that gets over last even though I don't do that anymore I learned the hard way on that one because in Boston you wait until the last second and you get over and people know that so you got your blinker on generally speaking they let you in it's all about the flow of traffic you don't you don't gum up the traffic until you absolutely have to and even then people let you in because they all know the culture up there when you have a last minute merge people let you in down here in North Carolina, it's very different. You get over as soon as you see the sign, and then you get pissed off at anybody who doesn't get over immediately. And then when they try to get in, you don't let them. So he asked us questions, asked everybody questions, especially that large group of people, majority, saying, all right, what, what do you think of these people who merged last minute? And they were saying stuff like selfish, um, rude, uh, dangerous, inefficient, all these negatives. And then he said, okay, I want one of you, so this lady, stand in the middle from my from the, the last minute merger side. And then the other people from the merge early sign side, you, you come, one person come over. So they're both standing face to face in the middle. And he says, okay, for the people who merge early, you lady, I want you to read these adjectives to this to this lady as you're face to face. And she felt very uncomfortable doing it. Until she started talking and then the anger started coming out. But the, the, the lesson there was bravery increases with distance. It's easy to be mean and cruel and yell and scream when you're anonymous or you're, you're in a relative safety. But if you're face to face then uh, it can be a different story. So then uh, he actually went to, on to prove, statistically speaking, with numbers, science, that merging at the last minute is actually more efficient and that they were all on that side wrong. He said, well, let's compromise. How would you compromise? And so 
let people in. You know, some people merge early, some people merge late, but you let them in. And that maintains the efficiency. But if you don't let people in who are merging last minute, you cause the traffic jam. And when you when you merge, when you get over too soon, you're slowing down and that causes the traffic jam. Which I found very interesting. And when he said that, when he said actually the, the early mergers are causing the traffic jam, jokingly I said, in your face! <laughs> they all started laughing. And then later on I said, look pal, or not pal, look people, just want to let you know that I actually don't do that. I don't actually merge late anymore. I learned the hard way. In North Carolina, I have learned the driving culture here is very different and you have to go with the majority unless you want to have problems. And you say, well, what, what problem did you have, Mike? Well, I'll tell you what problem I had. I was doing a last minute merge and as I was, this guy yells out asshole and then he slams his car, he, he jogs his wheel to the left slams into the right rear quarter panel of my car and does a pit maneuver on me and spins me out in front of him. Then he proceeds to go on the breakdown lane to get around me. I get out of the car because I think my car is undrivable anymore and it's bumper to bumper traffic so I run down the highway after him because I'm pissed and I get in front of him as he's trying to leave and I, I say do not leave the scene of this accident and he hit me. I ended up on the hood of his car, he's driving down the breakdown lane now, doing 35 miles an hour, swerving, trying to throw me off the hood of his car. It was a gigantic mess. His wife, she said I broke her arm. I never even touched the lady, she said I broke her arm. I had to go to court. They, they, that night the cop didn't believe the lady, uh, well she didn't say anything that night, but he said to us both, that cop, he says, look, uh, the guy who didn't yield, he was wrong. And the fact that you didn't yield when he refused to yield, you were wrong. So just let it go, basically. He didn't want to be part of it. Then that night after the accident, the lady goes to the magistrate in Raleigh. And she's got a, her arm in a sling already. This is like an hour later. And she says... This guy broke my arm. He broke my rotator cuff. He punched me. So next thing you know, there's a summons. I have to go to, to, to a trial because I've been accused of first degree assault on a female. And uh, it was a huge rigmarole that lasted two or three years. Ultimately, I was found not guilty, obviously. and. They were found to be those types that are always trying to scam the system. They had like six lawsuits against different people. They were convicted of, of grand theft. They were convicted of terroristic threatening, stalking. I mean, they were just these scumbaggy people that I had to go and make part of my life by being a Bostonian. So I learned the hard way. When you're in North Carolina, you do what they do. And in North Carolina, everybody merges early. So I merge early now. Do I let people in? Yeah, if they have a blinker. If they put on their turn signal, I let them in. I obviously would never intentionally hit someone to keep them from getting into my lane. That's just ridiculous. That's another thing about North Carolina I noticed. People here have two speeds, friendly or I'll kill you. There is no middle. They're very, very friendly. But you rub them the wrong way and man, that very friendly becomes very angry, furious, rageful, I will kill you. It's kind of shocking really. It's different from up north. In Boston, you're saying fuck you to people all the time. Ah, fuck you, fuck your mother, blah, 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 blah. But down here, uh-uh. You're cordial and then you kill. Very different. So I made sure to tell everybody at the thing today because they're all from North Carolina, except for me, and like one other person, that uh, I, I drive the North Carolina way now and I actually kind of like it because I'm fitting in. 
It may not be as efficient, but we're, we're in the south. You don't have to be maximally efficient at all times when you live in the south. It's not about efficiency, it's about quality. Quality of life. Up in Boston, it's nothing but stress, stress, stress. You have to be on your toes when you drive up there. Everybody else is on their toes. And it's aggressive. And if you're not aggressive, well, you're the odd man out. And that could get you in big trouble up there. Accident-wise, I mean, not people beating you up, although that does happen. So there's a lesson I, I imparted today to you folks and to my fellow folks there at the meeting today. Everybody was stunned when they saw me pull up on the bike. They said, geez, isn't it kind of nippy for that? I said, y'all don't understand. This is my weather. From October to May, I'm happy as a clam. Ooh, I like that old thing. So there you go, there's a story for you. This is my Kaylee 7. Since I have nothing else to say at the moment, I'll just sign off and say I'll talk to you later.